Good morning and welcome to St. Paul. Thank you so much for joining us for this time of worship, whether you're able to worship with us in person or worshiping with us online or possibly even in the parking lot via the radio. Uh, we are glad that we can gather together to worship the Lord. And so as we begin this time of worship, let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for today. We thank you for giving us this time where we can gather together to worship you. And so we humbly ask that your spirit will be with us so that truly you will be honored and glorified in all that we do. We dedicate this time to you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, let's join together in singing our hymn of praise. It's number 371, I Stand Amazed in the Presence. And we're going to be singing three verses, verses 1, 4, and 5. And so you're invited to stand as you're able, and let's sing together. may be seated. And welcome once again to St. Paul United Methodist Church. My name is Clifton Vaughn and I'm the pastor of the church and it's always a great joy when we can come together to worship God. Uh, thank you for any guests especially who are worshiping with us. Uh, we are glad that you are able to be here today and gather together for this time of worship. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping with us online, there is an online attendance link and so you're invited to click on that link to uh, let us know that you are worshiping with us so that we can in turn reach out and encourage you on your journey of faith. Today as a church, we are honoring our law enforcement officers, both in our church and also in our community. Uh, we're going to be praying for them, but we would like to also write them notes of appreciation. There's a basket in our narthex to receive those notes if you uh, have not yet written one, there's also some blank cards in the basket. And so you're invited following worship to use those cards to write a short note of encouragement and thanks, and then they'll be delivered to the police station. Uh, but today we do want to recognize any law enforcement officers either currently serving or have served in the past. And so any uh, who fall into that category are invited to stand at this time and let's recognize them. All right. 
Well, Jason, we are very glad. Yep, let's give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, Jason. Uh, Jason is currently serving uh, here today to uh, help us in our ministry. And so thank you very much for your service, not only here, but to our community. And for those who are worshiping with us online, we're deeply thankful for our law enforcement officers, both in this community and around the country. And so as we go forward into our time of prayer, uh, let's give God thanks and praise for them as well as bringing to God all those matters that weigh heaviest upon us. And so let's go to God in prayer. Most gracious and most loving God, we come before you now with hearts deeply thankful for all that you have done we thank you today as on this day where we honor our law enforcement officers and we give you our thanks and praise for them and we pray for your blessing to rest upon them not only jason and his service here but each law enforcement officer throughout this searcy community and around the world we pray that you will Grant them the strength and the wisdom, the guidance, the direction that they need so that truly they will fulfill the call that you have given them to bring law and order and safety to this community. Father, as we gather together, we also bring to you all those matters that weigh heaviest upon us. We know that there are many things in our lives that cause us stress, that bring us fear and anxiety. We bring them to you, for we believe that you are good, that you are all-powerful, and that you are gracious and loving, and that you not only hear our prayers, but that you answer prayer in wonderful ways. And so we bring to you all that is heavy upon us, asking for your will to be done. We do lift up to you those who have been in the hospital and are now recuperating at home. And so we pray for Bob Holman and Jane Tanner. We also pray for all those who will have procedures done this week. And so we lift up to you, Sue Ann and Mary Jean and others. And ask that in the name of Jesus, you will grant healing. That in the name of Jesus, you will renew their bodies and give them the strength that they need. We also pray, Lord Jesus, for all who grieve, who mourn, who are sad, and we ask that in the name of Jesus you will comfort them, that you will surround them with your loving presence, and that you'll move in the hearts of your church to come alongside them to be a source of encouragement and strength, to be a source of your love. We also pray for our community and ask for your spirit to be poured upon this community to create a hunger, an awareness, a desire for you. Empower us as your church so that truly we will be people filled with your grace to speak boldly and lovingly to those around us. Help us to be your disciples. And so as your followers, your disciples, we join together now in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I now invite the children to come forward and let's spend a few moments together here on the steps. So come on down, children. You bring that with you. That's great. All right. Okay, boys and girls, it's so good to see you. Thanks you so much for being here. Okay, I have some easy questions and some hard questions. Are you ready? Okay, here's the easy question. What is this? A shoe. A shoe. Okay, what's this? A shoe. A shoe. What do you have on? Shoes. Uh, what do you have on? Shoes. Shoes. I can't see. Are you wearing? Oh, what do you have on? Okay, so that's the easy question. Here's the hard question. Why do we wear shoes? Yeah. That's right. So that's right. So often we wear shoes not only because our mother or our father tells us that we have to, but often we wear shoes so that we don't step on a nail or a rock or anything sharp and it hurts our feet. Have any of you ever played in the backyard barefoot? You played barefoot or have you ever run around barefoot? Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Okay. You do too. Sometimes I run around barefoot. That's right. Have any of you ever, when you're barefoot, have you ever stepped on anything sharp? like those little tiny uh, burrs or those little tiny things that, that stick into your foot and it, and it causes some pain. Have you ever done that? I've gotten splinters in my fingers. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? Yeah, and those little nails. Oh, that hurts, doesn't it? Well, I get splinters from a fence. Yeah, sometimes splinters can really hurt. Well, today, while you're at Children's Church, um, we are going to be talking about still the armor of God and how God tells us and invites us to do certain things so that we can stand strong in our faith and hold on to God. Well, today we're going to talk about how we're supposed to put on our shoes. We're to put on uh, the feet that God has given us, the shoes that God has given us, which is really that symbol of God's peace. And that if we have peace with God, then no matter what pains may come, whether it is a rock or a splinter or whether it's a mean friend or a bad teacher or whether it's a mean sister or something like that, no matter what may happen, we can still have peace in our hearts knowing that God loves us and that God accepts us. So that's what we're going to be talking about in here. Um, let's pray together, and then you can go off to Children's Church. And so let's do an echo prayer, and so you can put your hands together, and then you can repeat after me. Dear God, dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me, for loving me. Help me to find peace. Help me to find peace in you, in you. Amen. Amen. All right, you may go off to Children's Church. Today you're going to be with Miss Bailey, or you may go back to your seats. Okay, bye-bye. And as the children go off to Children's Church, uh, we are going to continue in our worship of God through our giving. And so I invite our ushers to come forward at this time. And as they do, let me offer a word of thanks and appreciation. Uh, last week, uh, we gave a, a plea for an additional or special gift to help in our Vacation Bible School ministry. Uh, we had money budgeted for the ministry, but we needed an extra donation to provide shirts uh, for all the children. Uh, you responded very faithfully. God was faithful in providing all that was needed and more through your faithfulness. And so thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, through your giving of your tithes and your offerings, you're helping further the kingdom of God. And so thank you for that. 
Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for all that you have done. And now we give back to you a portion of what you have given us so that truly your kingdom will come. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, you're invited to remain standing and let's sing together our hymn of preparation. It is well with my soul. It's number 377 in your hymnals and we're going to sing the first three verses.
may be seated. Fifteen, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, the word of the God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Trish is one of our uh, lay servants here at the church, and so we're deeply thankful for her ministry. Uh, both to us as a congregation and also to our Northeast District of United Methodist Churches. And so thank you, Trish, for helping in today's service. Uh, next Sunday, I'll be away on vacation with my family. We're going to travel down to uh, see my parents and all of my siblings. I haven't seen, I'm the youngest of five, and I haven't seen them in a couple years, and so we're excited to get together. Uh, but do pray for us. I always remind Lindsay, my wife, uh, it's not necessarily a vacation, it's a family togetherness time. Um, so just take that for however you want. There's going to be, I think, 25 of us in a house, and so um, it's a lot of fun, it's a lot of excitement, but you're not sleeping late. So just take that for what it's worth. Uh, but Reverend Jesse James is going to be coming and bringing God's Word to us next Sunday. Uh, Reverend James is one of the pastors at First UM Church here in Searcy. And so please warmly welcome him next week and be praying for him as he prepares to bring God's word to us next Sunday. Today, we are going to continue our series by looking at the armor of God. And in the center part of your bulletin, you have uh, sermon notes for today. They're for you to use however you wish. There's a lot of scripture in today's message, and most of those are written on the sermon notes. And so that's for you to review during the sermon and also to take with you. It's also been posted on our Facebook page, and so for those who are worshiping with us online, feel free to pull uh, the document up at this time. Let me remind you where we are. Uh, we've been talking about a specific text written by the Apostle Paul. It's found in the New Testament, so right-hand side of the Bible. It's found in Ephesians chapter 6. Now, where Paul is during this time is he is more than likely... Uh, been arrested and placed in prison in Rome. And so he is in prison in Rome. Uh, we can see near the very end of the book of Ephesians that he's in chains. And so probably he has a Roman soldier or Roman soldiers that are watching over him and keeping him under guard. And so as Paul writes this letter, he uses that example of a Roman soldier and how they are dressed and he uses that example for us in how we are to put on the armor of God. Now we do that because we are in a spiritual war. We are in a spiritual battle. And the Apostle Paul shares that in the first few verses of our series, which is Ephesians 6, verses 10 through 13, to remind us that the battle we are in has been victorious in Christ but we are still battling those evil influences, those evil spirits that surround us. Now, I know for some of you that may be a little bit uncomfortable. And so throughout today's message, at times I may say Satan or, or the devil or demons or simply darkness. And so you can understand that however you wish, but I would like for you to hold on to that we are living in a spiritual world. And there is an evil spirit that is trying to destroy your life, to destroy your health, to destroy your family, to destroy your wealth, to destroy your relationships, and ultimately destroy your faith in Christ and lead you far away to the pit of hell in this world and in the world to come. And yet Christ has been victorious. We have that victory over Christ, with Christ. As Christ was victorious over the grave and has been raised to new life, we can hold on to that victory in Christ. And so we put on the armor of God so that truly we can stand firm in our faith no matter what attack may come. Now we started this a couple weeks ago by setting the scene and last week we put on the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. These were two things that 
that really started the armor and held the armor together. And as we shared last week, it was that foundational understanding that God's word is true. And we look to the word of God for truth. And it's in the word of God that we understand the means of salvation. The means that as we put our trust and our faith and our hope in Jesus then truly we have been accepted. That as we hold on to Jesus, then God looks at our lives not by our sins, not by our failures, but God looks at us as he looks at his son Jesus. Holy and righteous. And so we hold on to that belt of truth and that breastplate of righteousness in Jesus. Well, today we're going to continue on by looking at verse 15 in Ephesians chapter 6, and this is where we're going to talk about putting on those shoes. Now, before we get started too far, if you've done any research, if you've done any reading about this, even if you've checked different English translations, what you'll become aware of is that there's two ways to understand this verse. There's two ways to understand this verse, and most theologians, Bible scholars, They can't decide which one is true. And so I believe, as many other scholars do too, is that both versions are true. (laughs) That both ways to describe this verse are true. And so let me walk you through those two ways. So Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. The first way is simply that this verse is saying that we are to stand firm with the peace of God. That no matter what attack may come from the evil one, no matter what attack may come upon your life, you can stand firm in your faith with the peace of God. I love how the New Living Translation phrases this. It says, For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you'll be fully prepared. It's when we have that peace of God, then we'll be prepared for whatever comes. Uh, It reminds me of Romans chapter 5, verse 1, that we can find peace with God in Jesus Christ. Well, let me read it to you. Uh, Romans 5, 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul writes, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. We can stand firm in our faith no matter what attack, no matter what may happen to our finances, to our relationships, no matter what may happen in our jobs or with our children. We can stand firm in our faith because we have that peace with God. Paul also writes in our letter, Ephesians, in chapter 2, verse 17 and 18, he says, He, Christ Jesus, came and preached peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. That's why Jesus came, so that we can have peace with God. And as we have peace with God, then it brings peace to our own hearts, peace to our own lives. I believe I've shared some of my story with you of faith, but let me just share briefly part of it with you again. I I grew up in a very strong Christian family. Uh, I didn't realize that as a child. I thought all all families were like that, that my parents gathered us for breakfast every morning, and my father would read the Bible, and we'd have some prayer time. And, And though I grew up in that strong Christian family, I know as I was finishing high school and especially moving to university up in Northwest Arkansas, I made some very conscious choices to explore life, to explore what else was out there, what else could bring joy and and happiness and and fun. But it didn't always bring happiness and fun. It, It may have for the moment, it may have for the evening, but there was a lot of pain and turmoil that went with that. And I remember one time in particular during my second year at university where I just felt devastated. I didn't know where to turn. (laughs) My friends who I thought were my friends really weren't my friends. Well, they were as long as there was something in the bottle, but when the bottle was empty, I was left (laughs) hurting but also alone. (laughs) 
the relationship that I was in was not a healthy relationship at all. And, and I remember that evening in particular, we had had a terrible fight where mean things were said on both sides. And I remember hanging up the phone and, and just being upset. And my dad called, as he called most Sunday nights to see whether I went to church. And, and you know, I told him, yes, I did, because I would go to church every Sunday. I would sleep through most of it, but I went to church every Sunday. And I remember him, he's, he was just saying how, how proud he was of me and, and his other children and how they had never gotten into trouble and always done well in school. And he went on. And I just remember hanging up and just just crying because I was doing terrible in school and uh, I, I was doing terrible in relationships that weren't holy. I, my lifestyle was devastated and, and I, I had nowhere to turn. I didn't feel like I could turn to my parents. I mean, then I'd tell them the truth. <laughs> and I just remember crying and, and sitting on that floor. And I remember um, this, what I now know would be the Spirit of God. But at that time, I just heard a, a little whisper in my head, you know, why don't you talk to that Jesus guy? And so I had nowhere else to go. And so I remember kneeling down on that, dirty apartment com carpet <laughs> and uh, crying out to God and calling upon Jesus. And what I remember is that the Spirit of God, that, that love just seemed to pour into my life. And so that I began to experience God's peace. It didn't mean that my grades all of a sudden were better, and it didn't mean my relationship was all of a sudden better, but what it did mean is that I had God's peace in my heart, no matter what the turmoil, no matter what was going on. And that's what God has promised for us, is that as we put our faith and trust in Jesus, as we turn our lives over to Him, then He brings us His peace. I love how the Old Testament prophet Isaiah phrases it. It's in Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4. Isaiah says, You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord, the Lord himself, is the rock eternal. It says we trust in God, that He is our foundation. He is our bedrock. He is our cornerstone. He is the foundation of our lives. And as we trust in Him, then He overwhelms us with His peace, with His grace, with His mercy. It reminds me, too, of one of my favorite passages in the Bible. It's from uh, Philippians chapter 4, and I, I love those verses 4 through 9, but let me just read verse 7 in particular where Paul writes, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's that this peace of God will be our protection. Our peace of God will help us to stand strong no matter what may come. Now, Paul, he was referencing shoes. Uh, now, as he was referencing them, he was thinking about Roman soldiers and the shoes that they, were, they wore. Uh, Roman soldiers wore very thick leather shoes, and then on the soles of these thick leather shoes were hobnails. So they were spiked. They were kind of like you can think about soccer cleats. Uh, it, they were spiked so that as attacks came, they could stand strong and stand firm. Stand firm. It reminds me of a story I read this past week, and the story uh, comes from a British scientist named Theo Kyler. Theo Kyler. Uh, he and a, a couple of his friends decided to spend the month of July in Switzerland, and uh, as they were spending that time, they wanted to go mountain climbing. And so they hired a local guide named Jerry to help them climb the highest mountain in Switzerland. And as they did, even though it was July, as they neared the summit, there was more and more snow. And so they did make it all the way to the summit, but then on the way back down, uh, it got very dangerous because the snow 
uh, increased. And so the guide said, now we need to be very careful here. And so as I work my way down, only step in my footprints. Don't go one way or the other, because if you do, then an avalanche may start. And then there's a cliff below us, and so please be careful. Uh, shortly after he said that, and as they began to make their way down, uh, they began to feel uh, the ground begin to move underneath them. And they looked up and began to see uh, snow coming down towards them. And so they did all that they could to hold on, and they kept on getting pushed further and further towards this precipice, be towards this cliff. And the author, Theo, the scientist, said the only thing that saved them was the guide had shoes that had very sharp spikes in them, and he firmly planted his feet through that thin layer of snow into the ground and held on. I think that's the image that Paul is using here is that no matter what happens in our life that makes us feel like the ground beneath us is moving, we can hold firm in our faith as we have peace with God. So that means no matter the diagnosis, no matter the death of a loved one, no matter the marriage vows that are not kept, no matter what happens to your children, no matter what happens in your job, no matter what happens to the stock market or the housing price, whatever it may be, no matter what attack may comes from the evil one, when we have peace with God, then we can stand firm in our faith and we can hold on. Now, throughout the series, I'm trying to read this book. Uh, it's a 17th century book by William Gurnall, uh, called The Christian in Complete Armor. Uh, he was an Anglican priest in the 1600s, and in covering 10 verses, he wrote over 1,700 pages. It's just wild, isn't it? So I'm trying to read it. I'm not getting very far, but I am trying to read it. Uh, let me read one passage that I ran across that I love. He said, William Gurnall writes, it is our duty to be always prepared and ready to meet any trial and endure any hardship which God may lay out for us in our Christian warfare. The peace which the gospel brings and speaks to the heart will make the creature ready to wade through any trial or trouble that meets him in his Christian course. It's that when we have peace with God, we'll be ready for whatever happens. So that when we have peace with God, he will give us that ability to stand strong. Or I love how a, a fourth century Christian John Christendom writes, he says simply, well, if we're at war with the devil, we are at peace with God. If we're at war with the devil, we're at peace with God. All right, so that's one way to understand this text about putting on the feet that prepares us for peace. The second way is simply that as we have peace with God, then we are called to proclaim it to others. That as we have peace with, peace with God for ourselves, we are then prepared to share that peace with those around us. We are prepared to share that peace with the world that needs to hear. This is also the other translation for the New Living Translation of our key verse. It says, For shoes put on the readiness to preach the good news of peace with God. Or I love how the New Revised Standard Version puts it. It says, As for shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. So put on whatever it will take to make you ready to share that good news of Jesus Christ. This text from the Apostle Paul, it, it's really a reference to an Old Testament text from the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 52.7. Uh, Paul loved that imagery, and he, he also used it in Romans. And so let me read that passage here. It's Romans 10, verses 13 through 15. So in Romans 10, Paul writes, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, let me just stop there and, and just remind you that everyone 
does mean everyone, that Jesus came for everyone so that they can put their faith and trust in Jesus. And that means that as Jesus came for everyone, that means he came for you. It also means he came for your spouse and, and for your child and for your cranky boss and for your uh, rude co-worker and, and for those who have never heard the good news of Christ whether they be white or black or, or Asian or European or African or Latin American or anywhere in this world, Jesus came for them. And as everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, they'll be saved. And then verse 14, but how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scriptures say, this is the text from Isaiah, that is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. We are to put on those shoes so that we will be prepared to share that good news that people can find peace for their lives in Jesus Christ. We are to put on those shoes so that we'll be prepared to share that saving message with this community and this world that they can be saved in Jesus Christ, that they can be found, they can have redemption and forgiveness, and they can find peace with God for them in Jesus. But it requires us to be prepared to share. It requires us to be able to speak a word of faith, a word of hope, a word that points to Jesus. Are, are we willing to do that? Uh, I love how one person by the name of Jay Vaughn, I, I doubt a relative of mine, um, he phrased it this way. He said, as a servant of the cross, you are appointed the high work to bring souls to Christ. As we serve God, we're given that high work to bring souls to Christ, to bring people to Christ. That's our calling. That's our command from God. That's what we have been invited and called and challenged to do. And here Paul is saying, well, let's get ready. Let's put on our shoes and we're going to be ready to share that peace of Christ. I love how Paul puts it in Colossians 4. He says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. When we have peace with God, even in the midst of a bad diagnosis, when we have peace with God, even in the death of a spouse, in the death of a loved one, when we have peace with God, when the stock market crashes, when we have peace with God, when we lose our jobs, when we have peace with God, the world will notice and they'll ask, how can you be joyful? How can you be happy? Where do you find peace? And we need to be prepared and ready to share that word of hope, to point people to Christ. Now, one thing to take it one step further is that you may want to pray every day to say, God, open up my eyes to opportunities to point people to you. And I believe that as you pray that, to open up your eyes to opportunities to point people to you, then God will open up your eyes and you'll be given opportunities to point people to Christ. So whether you want to understand this verse as finding peace with God for yourself or, or preparing to share that good news, I think both apply. And it's how are you going to respond one of my favorite pastors was a man by the name of John Stott. He was the pastor of All Souls Church of England in, in London. And he has this phrase. He says, In either case, the devil fears and hates the gospel because it's God's power to rescue people from his tyranny, both us who have received it and those with whom we share it. 
So we need to hear and keep our gospel boots strapped on. So will you put your boots on? Will you take that step of faith to put your trust in Jesus and experience God's peace? Will you put your boots on and be prepared to share that good news with others? How will you respond? Let's pray together. Dear God, we do come before you. We come into your presence simply as we are. We like to dress up and, and act like we're perfect, but you know that we're not, and you see us simply as we are. And you love us. And you invite us and welcome us to come to you. And so I pray, Lord Jesus, that your spirit will be active and present with each of us who are worshiping. That you will help us to not trust in our wealth or trust in our family or trust in our health but that you will help us to take that step of faith that no matter what is going on, that we can cry out to you and that we can trust you, Lord Jesus. And I pray that as we take those steps of faith to trust you, you will pour your peace into our lives. And I pray, Lord Jesus, for all of us who experience your peace, that you will empower us, strengthen us, and open up our eyes so that truly we will be prepared, we'll be ready to speak boldly and lovingly and point people to you, Lord Jesus. Be glorified in our lives, in our conversation. Further and extend your kingdom throughout this community and around the world. Hear our prayers. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, today we're going to sing a, a, probably a new hymn for you. Uh, it's our hymn of commitment. It's number 573 in your hymnals. You do have some hymnals in front of you. The words are going to be on the screen. It's O Zion Haste. Now, I know new hymns are a challenge, but I love the words of this hymn because it resonates with what I wanted to share with you today. And so for those of you who are worshiping in person, you're invited to stand and let's sing together O Zion Haste.
join us now in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, thank you again for worshiping with us today, whether in person or online. We're glad that we can gather together. Uh, let me just mention to you again that we are receiving notes of appreciation for our law enforcement officers. Uh, they can be received in the basket in the narthex. There's also some cards, some blank ones. If you've not had an opportunity, you're invited to complete one of those and just leave it in the basket. And then our youth will have a mission week here uh, in a couple weeks. And they have the youth that are needed and the tools that are needed, but they still need a couple adult volunteers. The adults, you're not expected to do the work, but you are expected to give the youth some guidance on how to use those tools. And so if you would like to help, uh, please just see Margie or contact the church office and we'll connect you with Margie. Uh, but receive now this benediction and this blessing as we leave this place. And we pray that God will bless you that God will watch over and protect you and give you the power and the strength to stand firm in his peace. Go in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.